So portable projectors are getting insanely good nowadays, and honestly, I'm more so looking at them in the sense where they're not really portable projectors, but more so full-on projectors that just so happen to be portable. Today, I'm jumping into two top contenders in the portable projector space, being the Nebula Capsule 3 and the Samsung Freestyle. The main difference here is that the Samsung Freestyle projects with an LED bulb, whereas the Capsule 3 projects with a laser. Both offer amazing quality projection at 1080p with a slew of additional features, and in this review, I'll I'll let you know my take on what comes out as the better deal for 800 US dollars. I'll go over the features, specs, image quality, gaming, and more. I'll dive into the smaller and larger setups you might use and how each perform. But full disclosure here, Nebula did send me out this projector to review, however they explicitly told me to express all of my personal views on both products. They're super confident in their Capsule 3 projector, which is definitely a good sign. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. On this channel, I cover gaming tech and a few things in between, so if you enjoy the video, be sure to like or subscribe, and if you don't, someone will hold a door open for you that's awkwardly far away. But jumping right into unboxing both of these projectors, they're both just about the same. Jumping into the Capsule 3 first, you have all the paper work that everyone definitely reads, the remote with batteries, a charging cable, as well as the brick with regional plugs. Of course, there's the Capsule 3 itself, which is far more solid in hand than I anticipated, but jumping right into the Samsung Freestyle is just about the same in terms of paperwork. It does come with a rechargeable remote, as well as a charging brick and cable. In hand, this one does feel a little bit lighter than the Nebula. Whether that's a good thing or bad thing is totally subjective. The Freestyle weighs in at 542 grams, and the Nebula at 597 grams, so both are wildly light for portability. And that's that's it for both in the boxes. It's wild to think both of these are full on big screen displays with built in speakers and everything else you might need. Tech like this is definitely exciting. And talking about the build quality, design, and ports, this is where some of their similarities start to split. Starting with the Capsule 3, first thing noticeably is that it's super solid and dense. It almost feels like it's built from a solid piece of metal. And for ports, you have a Type C port for charging, a headphone jack, as well as a full HDMI port. On the top end, there's some backlit touch controls, which is definitely useful in case you don't have the remote for any reason. You also have the rear power button and a Bluetooth bearing button for speaker only mode. The entire projector also has perforated holes throughout the body, which is for both heat dissipation since there is a fan, as well as the 8 watt speaker. And of course, there's the front facing laser with a camera sensor for auto keystoning. I do wish there was some sort of cover for this though, in case you get fingerprints or damage. If traveling, you definitely want to put a sock over this or something similar. Lastly, on the bottom side, there's a quarter inch threading should you want to put this on a tripod, which will give you more options for placement and angles. Similar to the Nebula, the Samsung. Samsung Freestyle is built really well and has some sort of soft rubbery finish. It feels nice to the touch but may take on a couple scuffs. And as mentioned before, the Freestyle is noticeably lighter, most likely since it doesn't have a battery compared to the Nebula. On the top end, there is an included cover which helps protect both the LED bulb and the keystone sensor. And like the Capsule 3, there are some touch controls here as well. Noticeably different is the inclusion of a built-in stand that will allow you to project at different angles right off the bat, although you don't have the ability to attach a tripod. This will definitely be the easier option for ceiling projection. In terms of ports, you have the USB-C port, which is only used for power, as well as a mini HDMI port. This for me is a bit of a shock out of the box. I truly wish this was a full HDMI. Neither of the projectors come with an HDMI cable, but at least one of them is common. I personally don't even have a mini HDMI to do certain tests. Overall though, I really dig both of these for build and aesthetic. These are entire projectors no larger than a bag of milk, and each are premium products easily. However, I'm simply not a fan of the mini HDMI on the Samsung projector. I'd love to know the thought process behind that one. Samsung makes up for it slightly with the pivoting stand, but I gotta give my vote to the Capsule 3 on this one. Spec-wise though, they're both really similar, but also fundamentally different. Starting with the Capsule 3, you have a laser projector with a peak brightness of 300 ISO lumens. The laser is rated to last up to 30,000 hours, which is wild, which displays 1080p image on the Android 11 operating system. The capsule can output an image between 40 and 120 inches, which honestly fills up a wall no problem. And with Android 11, you also have access to Google Assistant and audio playing through an 8 watt speaker. For the Samsung Freestyle, similar to the Capsule 3, this puts out a 1080p image, although it does it with an LED bulb versus a laser. The main difference here is that the bulb was only rated for 20,000 hours and a peak brightness of 200 ISO lumens. Still, 20,000 hours is absolutely plenty. It's just something to be mindful of. The Freestyle, instead of Android, uses Tizen TVOS, which can integrate both Bixi and Alexa Assistant.
Assistant. The main difference here is not having any access to the Google Play Store, but it still has all the popular streaming apps you might need out of box, and it projects up to a 100 inch display, which is similar but a little smaller than the Capsule 3, likely due to the lower brightness of the LED bulb. And as mentioned, they are very similar in that they both put out a 1080p image, although the Nebula does maintain a brighter image at a larger screen size. And again, that comes down to laser versus LED. Setting these up are both super easy though, although I definitely wouldn't save it for movie night. Collectively, between software updates and installing certain apps, it takes about 30 minutes to set up each of these and to log into all the apps you might want to use. Both of these were still easy to set up and they do use either your smartphone or tablet for app logins, so it's not so bad. And once you're set up, you're definitely good to go. And what you'll use these mostly for is watching content, so jumping right into that, I will mention there's definitely a difference between the LED and laser projection like I mentioned. To start, I'll have both of these plugged in going forward, as well as have them as close to the same distance from the wall as possible. When it comes down to watching content, you win either way with either projector, however there is a noticeable difference when it comes to brightness and colors. In my office I was testing the screen side by side with the lights on and off, and there's definitely a noticeable difference for clarity and brightness. In terms of the detail you see, overall it is simply better coming out of the capsule. Both of these do look great though, and having access to all the streaming services makes it easy to enjoy. Even if you don't like the onboard softwares, you can always hook something up like an Apple TV or PlayStation for gaming and entertainment. Check out this side-by-side -side sound and image test. Again, they both look absolutely incredible, but I find the Capsule 3, again, does look better with the added brightness. And not that you'd really buy a projector for gaming, but I absolutely have to try this, and it still calls for an awesome time. I'll cut to the chase and say both projectors will likely have a high enough latency that you don't really want to do anything outside of casual gaming. Once you get into the Call of Duties and Overwatch games, the latency is definitely too high to be competitive, and you will lose almost all the time. Racing games, arcade games, or any other game that don't require quick inputs are definitely the ones to choose here, and still still call for a massive gaming experience. I will say I wasn't able to test gaming on the freestyle again due to the lack of the full size HDMI, so definitely keep that in mind if you're looking to get some gaming done. In terms of portability, they're both impressively small in terms of size. However, out of box, only the Nebula is truly portable, being that it actually has a battery. The freestyle not having a battery really does limit its ability to be used anywhere, especially if you go camping or to the beach or something, but if you don't have a power source available or if a socket's too far, you're kind of out of luck. The Capsule 3 will last up to 2.5 hours on a single charge while watching content, and up to 10 hours as a Bluetooth speaker. For size though, both will absolutely fit into just about any bag and are easy to move around. For me, it's an easy win for the capsule with a built-in battery, although either way, you can use both of them plugged in if you don't need to worry about battery life, giving you a plug-and-play solution. In terms of the operating systems on each projector, they both have full entertainment packages as mentioned, giving access to all the popular apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, and YouTube. Navigation-wise, they're both mostly the same with app-tile setups. Samsung is running Tizen OS, which is Samsung's proprietary OS, and while while not particularly lacking off the bat, it can't really compete with the massive amount of apps in the Google Play Store you'd find on the Nebula. I did find it rather odd though that the Capsule 3 didn't have Netflix out of the box, so I did have to download it using their Nebula Manager. Again, if you're looking for just the basic popular streaming apps, you're mostly fine. If you're not a fan of navigating with the remote, Google Assistant covers you on the Capsule 3, whereas you get both Alexa and Bixby on the Freestyle. Each have a button on the remote if you need to get this going. Honestly, none of the voice assistants really do it for me, but they are great for basic commands. In terms of autofocus and auto keystoning though, this is absolutely impressive for me. Both of the projectors handle this extraordinarily well. Both can be set up at different angles on any surface and adjust the projected image to be the correct size and look. I tested both projectors at a 45 degree angle as well as centered and both projected with no issues and each got it done in just about a few seconds. So the display stuff is absolutely incredible, but what about sound? And again, I'll say both of these do an incredible job considering the size of each projector. You find better low ends and fullness coming out of the Capsule 3 since it does have an 8 watt speaker versus the 5 watt you'll find on the Freestyle, but that's mostly noticeable in a side by side comparison which you wouldn't really be doing. Both of these also have Bluetooth speaker modes if you need it, making this actually incredible for gatherings. And again, while both pair over Bluetooth for speaker mode, only the Nebula has that battery, which is pretty much a staple in most modern Bluetooth speakers. But for all other features, the Freestyle does have more customizability. When it comes to cases, skins, and extra batteries, you can buy them. But the fact that you have to dish out extra cash does make this a little harder to recommend, especially coming in at the same price as the Capsule 3, which is the more complete package. 
But rounding this whole thing up, it's clear that the Nebula is a more complete package, so it's easy to see why Nebula was confident for me to give my honest opinion. As a standalone product, the Freestyle is still incredibly impressive, but putting it next to the Capsule 3 at the same price point, it's kind of a no-brainer which one is the better value. Maybe if you're deeply into the Samsung ecosystem or want to mount it to a light bulb socket, that could be the one to go for, and I will say my favorite thing about the Freestyle is the pivot stand. For literally everyone else though, the Capsule 3 has a better image quality, speaker, battery, and overall portability, but let me know down below in the comments, which one do you prefer? And thanks again to Nebula for sending this my way. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.